Camera internet. My quilt guild is having its biennial show this week. I don't have any quilts in the show because I just ran out of time to get anything finished. But I volunteered to help set up and I brought my camera along because I thought you might be interested in seeing just what's involved in setting up a show. The show has been held in a school hall. By the time I got there, all the chairs had been removed and the display boards had been set up by the hire company. I'd imagined it would be a pretty quick job to just hang the quilts on the boards, but it turns out it's a bit more complex than that. There's several different considerations when you're deciding which quilts go where. First, there's the different judging sections, traditional, modern, art quilts, etc, which all have to be grouped together. Then, of course, you have to think about what's going to fit on the board. A very wide quilt means you've got to find a narrower quilt to sit next to it. What makes the jigsaw much more complicated, though, is that you also need to think about how the quilts will look together. You don't want to put two quilts next to each other that have clashing colours, or to hang a delicate, subtly coloured pale quilt next to one that's in bright, vibrant colours that will completely wash out the first quilt. So quite often, we'd hang a quilt that we thought fit the space perfectly because it was the right size, and then the organiser would look at it and say, no, take it down, it looks ugly next to that one. We were pretty short on space too. There were more large quilts than the organisers expected, and fewer of small quilts. So we had to do a lot of rearranging just to try and fit everything in.
had all the quilts hung, the next step was to hang their display labels. These have two sides. One side is displayed during the judging. It has the quilt's title and the artist's statement, but not the quilter's name, so that the judges aren't biased. Once the judging is finished, all the labels get flipped over to the other side, which has the full information with the quilter's name and things like the price if the quilt's for sale, ready for the public opening. Matching up the labels to the quilts was pretty tricky. You'd grab a handful of labels and then walk around turning over the edge of the quilts to find their fabric labels and try and match the names. It was made a lot harder by quilts that had their labels in weird places so that you had to search the whole back of the quilt to find it. Handwritten labels that were really hard to read and of course quilts with very similar names. A hot tip, never call your quilt anything with the word garden in it. There were so many garden variations on names. Eventually we had everything hung and labelled and finally five hours after we started hanging the quilts the show was ready for the judges and we could all go home. I just found the process really interesting and I learned a lot. Next time I enter a quilt in a show I'm going to be a lot more aware of how I do my label and how I do the velcro along the top because that was one of the biggest frustrations was people who'd attach their velcro in annoying ways <laughs> so next time i will know better and i will have consideration for the people hanging the quilts <laughs> anyway i hope you found this interesting too don't worry i did film some highlights of the quilts as well so that will be in the next video hopefully if i get it edited in time <laughs> Don't forget to do all those nice internetty things like liking and subscribing and leave a comment and I will see you next time. Kakite anō internet.